Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis Trading Plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. Before we pull up our video, we always want to start off our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be referred as a trading recommendation. No matter what foreign investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can't lose all of your money. Any strategy we show today are for informational purposes only, future results not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility, trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our forex technical analysis trading plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. In each video, we look at the prior session's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll review the gold chart to come up with leading sentiment. We'll try to create a low volatility and inside bar watch list, and we have an education spotlight at the end. Please send your feedback and comments to contact at dmbfx.com, and let's head to the charts. As usual, we are starting off with the uh, gold daily chart, and we can see that the market continues to consolidate a little bit, trying to digest this huge move upwards. Today's action and the past couple of days action have continued to come on lighter volume. You can see where our volume is in, uh, with reference to our move up. We can see that the buying volume is still uh, prevalent uh, with regards to gold. But again, the market is digesting this move. Um, you have to kind of imagine that we would go sideways for a little bit until uh, you know we have some more resolution on, on what really is going on with the U.S. and the European debt situation. Now. What we can see is um, heavy volume accumulated in this 1741 price level. You can see that right here. And we can see that we're breaking higher. Now, if we can get above where we are, if we can get above, say, 1770, well, then that, that puts us right in line to go and retest 1786 here, the past. Now, let's pull over here. Oops. And we can see that the next area that... Uh, uh, we have some volume accumulating is around 1786, 1790. So we just need to get a little bit higher and then we can get into this vacuum area right here. However, we can see we are overbought at the current time. So uh, sideways on gold, what does that mean to the dollar and our dollar pairs? Well, here we are looking at the pound dollar and we can see a couple things. We're still looking at our our consolidation range and we as we get closer to here we can see the sellers beginning to say here's a value and trying to push the price lower so it's going to be as we wicked up into this area um, you can see uh, the sellers brought us back again we can see the volume really starting to uh, fade off here and you're going to see that as we can see, no one's no one's interested. Buyers aren't 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 trending. Sellers aren't trending. Every now and then they both find value, and they're just keeping us in this range. Now, when we slide over, we can see that we are above neutral, and we are in a a selling zone above our long-term moving average. And we can see that the pound uh, currently is in control. And once the pound took control, that's when we really start to see our move higher um, so again as we look at it you can see the pound trending upwards as the dollar uh, moves sideways and that's allowing us to move higher but as we consolidate that's what we're seeing here back on the daily that this is where sellers may come in and since we're in a sell zone above a long-term moving average that also weighs in together about whether or not we're going to be able to finally bust through the 1.645 1.65 price level when we switch over to the euro dollar we can see the same range it's a little bit wider but we're same range we can look at this downtrend that we're watching and we can see are the sellers coming in to push this lower to identify that we can see that we are likewise in a sell zone we're above our long-term moving average so there is some evidence there and we can see right here though that the euro took control and we diverged so that would mean that price is going to continue up at least back to our 1.45 price level. That's a very nice divergence. We can see again the dollar's level horizontal and the euro took a move up. So that was, if the euro stays in control, I would see us retesting the 1.45 uh, 
uh, price level. Finally, with the euro, I'm sorry, the dollar franc, we've had a very nice move upwards. Uh, we came up and tested the last basically support price level. Uh, we have this level drawn in, but you can also see these wicks here. And where we wicked here is basically where price came, and then the sellers found value and pushed it right back down. Now we have an inverted hammer, which would suggest a move down, just a candle pattern by itself. What can we use to support that? Well, we're in a sell zone. We're above our long-term moving average, and the franc is in control. However, they're both negative, which is why we're really seeing a sideways action. As we've been saying, the dollar is moving sideways. But what's interesting here is the franc is kind of moving lower. So if that's the case, then we may not make our move quite yet to our, our long-term moving average in neutral. We may retest some of this wick area to see if the virus can gain control. As we come to our watch list, for our low volatility watch list, we're going to be watching a dollar franc and a dollar yen. And in our inside bar watches, we also have the dollar yen. So for our low volatility watch list, that's our one hour time frame. Put on some Bollinger Bands, watch the high and low and see if we can get a breakout. Same thing on the inside bar watch list. However, now we're looking at the daily, looking at the high and low of the range and see if we can break, preferably in the direction of the trend. So today we're going to talk about hurdles to trading and any experienced trader will tell you that the best way to be successful is overcoming all the hurdles that get in your way we spend a lot of time talking about the emotional psychology hurdles of trading but there's other things you know do you have a set location where you're trading do you have uh distractions tvs family friends um do you have the the necessary uh, equipment you know uh computer internet uh, subscription services, uh, training, whatever. In order to be a successful trader, you need to clear all those hurdles and keep those hurdles out of your way while you're trading. And so often, uh, you know, I keep saying one of the biggest hurdles to trading is Google because people, instead of focusing on themselves and developing a trader's mindset, they focus on Google to find the next greatest thing, the holy grail, and it's really just another hurdle. So, Take the time, identify your hurdles, get over them, clear them out, and that will help you down the path of being a successful trader. You know you can find our videos on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financial Literate? We have our resources for you. We have a free five-part uh, video course on high probability trading. That should give you an insight about our coaching and teaching style, and we believe that's the difference. We can help you get rid of those hurdles. We can help you develop that trader's mindset. One-on-one -on -one coaching where we'll develop a personalized trade plan for you. Get paid to trade. It doesn't change your spreads or trading conditions, but you can get rebates for your Forex trades. And finally, automated signals. You can have it traded for themselves, or you can get the signals and you can trade them. But most importantly, because there's a bunch of providers in the signals, you can find the provider that matches who you are as a trader. But again, it's not about the system. In reality, the systems are usually your, uh, your hurdles. It's about developing a trader's mindset where you're focused and disciplined about your trading and about the business of doing business. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.